Hi, welcome to the part 9 of this video series. We are looking at AWS Solution Architect Associate Real Exam Questions. You may refer parts 1 to 8 for previous questions. Please focus on the technique explained to solve these questions. We usually cover the concepts for each and every option, which is very important to grasp the concepts. The chances of same or similar questions coming in the exam is pretty high. Please, please subscribe to my channel. If you like the content, then please click like. For questions 1 to 50, please refer parts 1 to 8 of this video series. Let's move ahead with question 51. Please pause this video to read this question. Now here are the keywords. The first keyword here is it has minimum two instances and maximum of four instances across two availability zones. So minimum of two instances, maximum of four instances across two AZs. And the question is asking about if they are monitoring the CPU utilization, it is very low for all EC2 instances. So that means the load is not high and the solution architects should recommend to maximize utilization. How to maximize utilization? While ensuring that the application remains fault tolerant. This fault tolerant means is we, we should not just put one EC2 instance and that will utilize, make it uh, properly utilized but then it will not be fault tolerant because once this single EC2 instance crashes, there will not be any backup. So using a single EC2 instance is out of scope because the question already says it should be fault tolerant. Let's see the options. Remove some EC2 instances to increase the utilization of remaining instances. Now this option will not work. The reason for that is if I remove some EC2 instances, suppose I'm operating with a minimum two instances, okay? And I remove one EC2 instance. So then it will not be fault tolerant. So I have uh, the question already says I need to be fault tolerant, fault tolerant. So A is wrong. Let's move to B. So here it says you increase the block store capacity for the instances with less CPU utilization. Suppose this is my configuration. I have two EC2 instances, one instance on each AZ and I'm using this configuration. So block store, what it does is each EC2 instance has a under underlying block store to save the data. So if the CPU percentage uh, is less, how will it help? So if the CPU utilization is already less, how will it help if you increase the capacity of the block store? So this CPU utilization is already less. Even if you add more storage, it will not help you out. So this is totally uh, wrong, illogical. So B is wrong. Let's see C. C says modify the auto scaling group to scale in and out based on the high CPU utilization metrics. So what the question says is the CPU utilization is very low, consistently low. So what I uh, assume is if even there is it never scales up up. There is a minimum of two instances it is operating and the utilization is very low. So how to make it high? So the utilization metrics will not help because it will constantly check the utilization metric and it is always low so it will never scale up and C is wrong now we are left with only one option last option is option D so create a new launch configuration that uses smaller instances and update the existing auto scaling group this looks accurate what we will do is start with small EC2 instances these issue EC2 instances are big so that's why it uh, the CPU never gets utilized and uh, the scale up never happens so if you make this EC2 instance small so diagrammatically, I'm making it small, but what small means you will configure with a less disk size and so on. So once you make it small, the CPU will increase and the scale up will happen if you put metrics scale up based on the metrics. Hence, option D is correct. Let's move ahead with the next question. See question number 52. So you may pause this video here. So these are my keywords for this question the so aws will communicate to our database within the vpc the application should be highly available so vpc is the keyword and highly available is the keyword here so let's see these options so let's see option a so option a suggests you have two ec2 instances behind a load balancer and then you put the database on a big ec2 instance now this option doesn't address anything about VPC, virtual private cloud. Hence for me, this 
is wrong. Now let's see option B. So this is talking about you know putting your entire infrastructure, whether it be EC2 instances or database, on multiple AZs. They are making a choice of RDS for the database, and that also will be on multiple AZs. So this will address maybe highly available. But it will not address this VPC stuff. And the other thing is, we usually never deploy uh, load balancers uh, that way. Now we have it. We have the EC2 instances which are behind load balancers into multiple AZs that works. And then that will interact with RDS. But if RDS is also on multiple AZ, multiple AZ is usually used for as a backup. Okay. Since it is not answering the VPC stuff, we will reject it. Now, see this option addresses VPC. What it does is it puts this load balancer in a public subnet and this database, which is very secure, in a private subnet and it addresses your VPC requirements. Hence, for me, this is correct. C is correct. The problem with option D is it is telling you to configure a domain that points to two web servers. My understanding, whatever I have seen is you cannot configure a domain to point to two web servers. Now, if you see this document here, so it is what is doing is we are configuring the IP, the elastic IP for that EC2 instance. So this is the IP for that EC2 instance in a domain provider. So we are setting this up. And we can do it for one elastic IP. Hence, D is wrong. We will lock this answer and move forward. So, let's see question 53. You can pause this video here to read this question carefully. First, let us identify the keywords. Now, these are the keywords. Let us understand the story now. So you have a website and this website is residing on n number of EC2 instances. Now some EC2 instances are failing. And why is it failing? Because of insufficient swap space. So what option should we follow now? If you see this option A, there is nothing called metric dimension. We usually monitor metrics, hence A is wrong. Option B is talking about EC2 metadata, that is the instance metadata to collect this information. But instance metadata can track these information like host names, events, security data. It will not help you with swap space metrics so b is wrong c looks correct because whenever so if you see this question swap space it means clearly that a matrix needs to be monitored and whenever you want to matrix uh, monitor a matrix you need to put a cloud watch agent on that instance so put an agent on each of these instances and then you can monitor the matrix this is a process Whenever you monitor any metrics, even if you are monitoring custom metrics, if, in, if they are not standard metrics, you can do it by installing the agent. Now, what is a swap space? That we should also understand. So, usually uh, the physical RAM is used to store some data. But if that physical RAM is full, then a temporary storage is done in this swap space and that you can monitor if that swap space is also getting full or not using this option C. So if you see option D, <coughs> I have marked this custom. This metric is not a custom metric, this is a system metric. Hence option D is wrong. So we will lock this answer and move forward. Now let's see question number 54. So I have marked the keywords here. So the keywords are it's simple. There is a burst of traffic happening every day at noon, say 12 noon. 
there is a burst of traffic happening and uh, what are the users doing they are uploading the pictures and contents daily and they are completing about timeouts so there are some timeouts happening okay the architecture uses ec2 instances auto scaling groups there are a lot of ec2 instances in auto scaling group okay and here's the problem statement it uh, takes one minute to initiate the boot up so this boot up is for the instance ec2 instance so whenever you try to auto scale no the, the, there is some time of some sort of booting suppose there are three instances and the load is high and a fourth instance is being created so it will boot up it takes one minute to boot up and during that time if some loads are coming it will show timeout because the boot up takes one minute so what to do a common sense says the problem is with ec2 instances so let's scan through the options so it says about nlb with a slow start configuration so in the recent exams there will be no questions related to nlb so you can whenever as a thumb rule you are seeing any options with nlb this rejected because uh, that, that is out of uh, syllabus now but still if you had to answer there is no load balancer mentioned in the question and a load balancer with a slow start configuration means so there will be a load balancer here and there are some ec2 instances and before passing the load it will help it will put a slow start configuration for ec2 instance that means it will go and check if uh, this guy has started or not if not then it will not pass the load here. but our question doesn't talk about anything about such loads and the other thing is our question is already saying that uh, uh, there is a timeout happening if there is a timeout happening that means there is no slow start configuration in place but uh, in order to respond to this changing traffic could you put this solution in place and will it solve your problem that is the question so it will not solve your problem because you know if it is in slow start configuration is place and if it is not ready you still get timeouts so a will not solve it a is wrong so elastic cache for redis we use on uh, databases on top of databases so that your analytics application like uh, say click or tableau etc or power bi can uh, access the data from the buffer so that the load on the database can be reduced here do we have any such scenarios no there is no database at all mentioned here so b is totally out of context b is wrong c this looks correct because what it is saying is you put the auto scaling step scaling policy with instance warm up condition that means this ec2 instance is already warmed up take the example if you are in chicago and during winters when the snow is falling uh, you know you from your house you are using the remote control and starting your engine and then when you go out you immediately take the car out and your car engine will not go bad because it already warmed up for 5 to 10 minutes so it's the same concept here you keep it in the warm up state so that whenever the load comes it immediately takes the load and people will not get timeout error and c is correct let's still see option d see option d is talking about cloud front that means caching at the application level so it is talking about using caching there but this problem is not a caching problem this problem is that the uh, underground ec2 instances uh, they they are not booting up in time Plus, this caching will not help you because you see here the users upload new pictures and contents. Caching only helps if the same old pictures or contents are being used or read. But if everyday users are uploading new pictures and contents, caching will not help. And hence, option D is wrong. We will lock option C. So, we will lock this answer and move forward. Let's see question 53, uh, 55. So, please pause the video here if you want to read this question carefully. So, these are my keywords. The first is I know that there are thousands of sensors. Okay. The other thing I know is these thousands of sensors are sending high volume of data each second. And the third thing I know is I want to collect that data to put into a database or somewhere to analyze it in near real time with millisecond responsiveness. If I want millisecond responsiveness, I the first thing I think about is redshift. If I want near real time, uh, then the first thing I think about is lambda. Okay, And if I see thousands and high volumes of data each second the first thing i think about is kinesis data streams so scan through the options now option a so i have a uh, lot of sensors here thousands of sensors the data will come into this place and then uh, we will do some processing so, so the data will come here through some space uh, through some tool like sqs or uh, kinesis and then we will since that data is raw so we will have to apply some processing here usually that processing we apply through lambda because it is cost effective 
and it is serverless architecture and then we have to put in some database so that analysis can be done on it okay now this option uh, these two things look correct lambda looks correct and redshift looks correct but sqs is a problem here because see what happens is the main difference between sqs and kinesis data streams is you use kinesis data streams whenever you see thousands of sensors high volumes of data i repeat again thousands of sensors high volumes of data you use kinesis data streams thousands of sensors high volume of data use kinesis data streams okay sqs cannot handle high volumes of data sent each second through thousand of sensors it is not equipped with that hence a is wrong again so here it's the typo it is still talking about sqs but sqs like i told you it is wrong because it cannot handle high volumes of data so b is also wrong and b is also wrong because you never use dynamo db for analyzing near real time you never use that you dynamo db why it is uses for some, something like you you know there is an app similar to uber in us called lift lift uses dynamo db to store its data it's also based on serverless architecture and it provides milliseconds response whenever you are booking your cab so in this case b is wrong now see this looks perfect why it looks perfect is because uh, you are using data streams lambda and redshift means is this is data streams you take the data in raw format it comes now you have to make the data good why you want to make it good because you cannot enter raw data directly in database you have to process it so you consume the data using lambda uh now you have to put it in the database also no so this lambda will consume it process it and put it in, in database if you are not using lambda you will have to put some etl tool which is not uh, good either from performance perspective or cost perspective or from a near real time perspective and this is redshift only redshift can analyze data with millisecond of responsiveness because it is having columnar data structure and node based architecture so c is perfect for us in the similar lines d has same options but last one instead of redshift they have used dynamo db like i told dynamo db uh, is primarily used if you are creating an app for oltp transactions like uber lyft and if you want to analyze data you want a data warehouse kind of system which is based on a node architecture that's why redshift is more apt here hence d is wrong c is correct so we will lock this answer please subscribe to my channel this brings us to the end of this part see you in the next part please remember these are real exam questions the chances of same questions coming in the exam is pretty high even if you do not get the same questions please focus on the concepts so that if the questions are similar you can still answer See you in the next part.